If you saw Ubisoft's E3 press conference, you were probably delighted to see them announce a new pirate-themed multiplayer game called Skull and Bones. Unless that is, you work for Rare, the company currently developing a new pirate-themed multiplayer game called Sea of Thieves. Awkward. Six months, Six months. Go them slow. So they're both multiplayer pirate games, but just how similar are these games in reality? Join us for a look at how these two games stack up against each other in five key areas. Arias. Pirate joke. The most immediately obvious difference between the two games is the tone. Sea of Thieves is going for a fun, silly vibe. It's a game where you replenish your health by eating bananas, and if you want to, you can get drunk on grog and fall in the ocean. It's also got a much more cartoony art style. That's not to say it doesn't look good, it's got some incredible weather effects and the water looks amazing, which is good, because if you play anything like we do, you'll be spending a lot of time in it. Skull and Bones, meanwhile, is a lot darker in tone. It's set in the West Indies in 1721 and takes a more realistic approach to the pirating you'll be doing in the game. Added to that, the game's look is a lot more realistic, with some incredible detail on the ships and some beautiful looking corners of the West Indies for you to wreck up with your cannons. That's not to say there aren't still some surprises up its sleeve, though. Next up is how each of the games approaches multiplayer. Sea of Thieves is a persistent shared world game, which means that you'll be running into other players as you explore the world. You and your friends can form crews and go on missions together, or just sail around looking for interesting stuff in a world that will change and update itself as time goes on. Skull and Bones, meanwhile, is also a shared online open world, but one in which you ally yourself with other captains to form gangs, before taking part in 5v5 game types such as Loot Hunt, in which you and your gang team up to take down a larger ship together. The world reacts to you as the more notorious you become, the more likely it will be that pirate hunters will come after you to try and make you pay for all that piracy. I mean, what's the penalty for that anyway? Light fine? Community service? They're firing mortars! Ah, death. Right. Another fundamental difference between the pirate games is the way they handle combat. In Sea of Thieves, each pirate crew consists of four players, each taking on different roles. To even get the ship moving, you'll need coordination and teamwork, with different crew members handling things like steering, navigation and sail management, and when you do get into ship-to-ship -ship combat, you'll need your crew loading and firing cannons manually, while someone takes the wheel and makes sure you don't crash into an unfortunately positioned island. Sea of Thieves also allows you to load yourself into one of the cannons and fire yourself across the ocean, which is useful for boarding ships, letting you switch to your cutlass to fight your enemies one on one. That's assuming you get your cannon angle right, of course. Tricky stuff, physics. In Skull and Bones, you're in charge of a whole ship, not a pirate. Tactically, you have access to different kinds of shot, as well as different classes of ships, including frigates, which can take and dish out a ton of damage, and sharpshooters, which are lightly armoured, but can hit enemies from far away. You'll also need to use the wind to your advantage to make sure you have the best positioning in combat. Unlike in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, where you could swing over to enemy ships and board them yourself, boarding in Skull and Bones looks to be an automatic process once certain conditions are met, which, again, we would probably find useful in Sea of Thieves. Taste of blackened silver! In Sea of Thieves, exploration is one of the main things you'll be doing. Following treasure maps, seeking out overheard legends, or just going where the wind takes you, Sea of Thieves is about sailing places, going ashore and exploring, while trying not to be killed by angry skellies. This isn't the case of Skull and Bones. As far as we can tell, there's no out-of-ship gameplay whatsoever, and while you are playing in an open world, it's only the ocean part that you'll be able to explore. I mean, might be for the best, what with all those skellies around on dry land, I guess. Finally, and definitely most importantly for a pirate, is the musical options on board your ship. In Sea of Thieves, your pirate can carry a concertina and a hurdy-gurdy, allowing you to form impromptu pirate bands to play inspirational music as and when your crew needs inspiring. Honestly, this is helping them much more than me actually helping would. 
Skull and Bones also has some excellent musical choices thanks to the fact that it's retained Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag's ace shanty system, which let you have your crew raise their voices in song if you wanted some close harmony accompaniment to your ocean-going rampages. How about a song, lads? Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey, hey, up she rises. So that was how Sea of Thieves and Skull and Bones stack up against each other in five key areas. Which game do you most likely look of? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more on both games coming soon on Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching.